So it's time to face Bargle and we are going to need a dedicated dungeon tile room for this. Hello and welcome to the Battle in Barrow. Um, I've just recently been making bits of terrain I'm using in my current D&D game and my players are coming up to face off against Bargle and I want to make a dedicated room for that, a bit of a showcase type of thing, sort of, I guess. The room in question has a pool in uh, one end of the room and a stone dial, a stone dice with a throne on top that is also uh, moves aside to uh, reveal a secret passage. So we're going to make that. But I'm going to cheat on the latter part because just recently over at Crooked Staff Terrain, uh, they have just made something really similar and really cool with a this stone throne that I've got here. We're going to make that reveals a secret passage. Um, I'm going to sort of utilize that. Not totally. Um, I'm going to totally uh, use that because I'm using foam core and he, they use corrugated card and utilize the corrugation in the card for the secret passage reveal. But we are effectively going to use that PDF. So what I'm going to do is put a link to that video in the description to watch that because Christine does a much better explanation of making that than what I can ever possibly do. And a link to the PDF where you can actually buy this print off and you don't have to worry about making stuff in fact go and watch his channel it's great for if you're not really into crafting but want some cool looking terrain he's got you covered there um but apart from that let's crack on with this build so going to turn to the map of the uh game in question and this is uh Bargles from room here and this is one square equals five foot so this is only four by four rooms if I use my tiles I use a one and a quarter inch grid system so but even so it'd be four squares would be that so just not quite four inches because I use something bigger but anyway the point is it's that and you'd have the water pool would be here and the throne would be there or other way around uh, water here from there in that orientation giving you not a lot of room to move around in. If I used previous throne uh, in my games, this is the Kobold Garish Bejeweled Throne. And then um, we don't have anything that can represent. Hold on. So if I use these individual squares here as the pool, you can see tactically you're not going to get a lot going on here. Uh, by the time you get your your models in, sorry, here you go, there you go, you've got... So I don't like that anyway, so I'm going to make it slightly bigger. I could double it of course, so uh, this would be 6 by 6 it would be even bigger, so going to be that wide, that high, I think that would be too big. Uh, but looking at this board here, do you know what would be just the right size? This actual board, so it's gonna be six by six. So effectively what I'm doing is coming into the cave here. So you know, the secret door, you, I won't have this bit. The bedroom door, I wouldn't have this bit and it will just be butted up straight up against this. That is how I'm gonna do it, so it'll be six by six which will uh, give us a bit more room to play around with. So, I, so I'll say the pool would be what here. That'd be the pool, that'd be the throne. you still got that difficult bit where you've got to go around having the bottleneck, so I like that. But you've got a bit more room here for any combat maneuverability. And I'm probably going to say Thrown on this one would be a 4x4 four four section, so it's going to be like that. Uh, but yeah, making it just a bit more tactical so you can actually get onto the dais up here, so to speak, maybe here. Yeah. yeah, so that's the size. So, what I'm going to do now is because you've seen me do this loads of times of cutting 
chipboard and foam and gridding it and texturing it. I'm going to get all that done straight off the bat. I don't know what colour I'm going to do for it. Let me turn to 65, I think it is. Um, the description is a heavy stone door swings open to reveal a chamber more opulent than the last. On the far side of the room, the placid pool and a mo uh, marble throne be decked decked with glittering jewels top of stone dais uh, not as bedecked as this this is a kobold's interpretation of this throne so it's be more classy um it's the real throne room bargle uh, it's 10 foot deep quite cold bargle's thrown carefully won't it change yeah so it's going to slide away um now i am a massive fan of crooked staff terrain and I've had this conversation with him that just recently uh, our minds seem to have melded and we're making the same sort of thing. And I already had this planned before he uh, released a video doing a similar thing, a hidden uh, throne, stone throne. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use a little wine, reinvent the uh, wheel. I can just use his excellent work he's done there. So what I'm going to do is for the throne, I'm going to go over and buy his PDF and utilize that i'll leave a link in the description to his video and the pdf on drive through rpg and that's what i'll use and the same sort of mechanism to allow it to slide away um to reveal a secret long passageway i'm going to use the same sort of thing um but yeah what i'm going to do is get on making the base with this cutting out the hole needed needed for the bits and pieces i won't show that otherwise i'll we'll be here all evening I've already gone on five minutes already so boom so for the throne as I said I'm gonna use uh, Christian Richards Crooked Staff Terrain's um, excellent PDF um, link in description as i keep saying uh pay what you want but obviously give more than what you ask because that's just polite um going to be using the throne and the dais and this obviously not this because we're going to be well it's a different scale you can see here i use an inch and a quarter but two i want my hole over here so the first thing i want to do is cut this out Put this to one side and I'm gonna want it put it here and this will show me where I need to draw around and cut out the hole like so and I shall now cut that out like so and so and this goes on the card. Some nice stairs descending down. Which will be lovely. Okay, I'm also going to cut out the bar for the water as well now. Like so. What I'm actually going to do now is um, undercoat and paint this, but that's not what we're here for. There is a whole video on making dungeon tiles, and it's just going to be done in the same manner as that. What I want to do now is cut out these bits here for the seat. Nice thing is, the seat I'm trying to make is described as marble, which I couldn't paint, and this looks quite marbly to me, so. Thank you for this. This is amazing. It's going to be a great help. So I'm going to cut these out. With the bits cut out, I can. What I want to do is start gluing them onto bits of foam. So I'm going to make mine slightly different to how they were designed to be. But now, on the actual how it, how you meant to do it, it's going to be three mil either side for the arms. So I've got a choice. I can either ignore that and just make it. 
six mil here. Let's put it in the middle just yet, so it'd be that thick. Is that too much, do you reckon, for this? Or I can try and strip this down in half in three mil. So I think I am going to attempt that using the hot wire cutter. Okay, uh, I shall now. I'm going to stick these on. Probably cut them out. Got them all cut out before the insides. Um, I'm just going to use this here. So for the inside of this one, I shall just twist around this bit here. Crooked Staff Throne is probably watching this video in absolute horror of what I am doing with his lovely work. I'm going to uh, I want this one. Can we Conserve. I shall do that. I'm going to cut them out and I shall also use this to do bits like going round the edge. Okay, so plink done, the seat will sit on, pack's done, sides are done, drown to top and bottom, seat's done. It's just a case now of gluing it together. I want to see a better way on how to make this. Just go to the main channel, go to Crooked Staff Terrain and see an expert do it. So I'm going to just glue these all together like this but I'm not going to glue this onto here because then this allows me just to throw it down anywhere on the tabletop and it stands up there quite well but I will glue these together because otherwise they'll get knocked about so these will be glued this won't and really pleased with it because it describes it as a uh, marble chair with jewels in I've got some jewels on the printed so this is perfect I might do something add some I don't know I like those. I'm going to leave it, I think. I am going to leave it. This is almost perfect, serendipitous. So that is the throne done. On uh, Christian's channel, Crooked uh, Terrain Staff, he has a lovely mechanism, which would be great, uh, where it actually can have a sliding mechanism. I won't be able to do that on mine due to the foam core, uh, foam, insulation foam, rather than corrugated cardboard. But I don't mind just sliding it across and putting it on. Going to glue the stairs into place onto the chipboard. So for this, I'm just going to place this on. Draw around. That'll give me where to glue this on. For me, it'll be the stairs facing that way because the tunnel goes this way. So then when I glue this on, that is how it will look. Awesome. So I'm going to glue that into place now. And I've still got to get paint in this, which I won't do on camera. Here's how it looks at the moment. Uh, but for the pool, I am going to add some water effect into here. Um, it's going to, I'm going to be using uh, these Zaturdes uh, Easy Water Droplets I've used on the channel before. But before I get to that, I want to try and seal this in. So I'm going to use some Black Mod Podge, which is a sealant. So hopefully this will just help seal the uh, card. It's quite thick stuff when you pour in, but even so, I thought I figured can't help but protect it. So I'm just going to paint some of this black mud podge into here. And what I also want to do is just try and make it water tight or resin tight is add a bead of hot glue just down the edge going all the way along when you pour when I pour the murky water into this I hope you shouldn't be able to see this and hopefully my plan is it will seal as a sealant stop any liquid getting underneath here. I'm 
not gonna lie at this stage I'm actually a bit nervous about this whether this is a good plan or not doing this if you're worried about it uh, my recommendation would be just to paint a water color here and seal it with varnish or PVA glue or maybe just pour a bit of Mod Podge into there but for now let's see how I get on let's do this bit next so I am using Suturdez water droplets I've used these before and they are some droplets and this water softener and you have colored dye beads as well um, you heat you put these into a jar a container heat it up in an oven and it goes to a liquid form and then you can pour that to wherever you want and your your way so uh, get a heat proof glass heat your oven to 175 add in the beads add in the water softener and you don't add the dye drops in at this stage what you next do is put the jar on a heat proof container just in case anything happens we don't want the jar smashing uh, put it in the oven, a preheated oven, uh, for the required amount of time. Uh, I will set a timer for 45 minutes. And when you get to it to a liquid state, about halfway through, you can add the coloured droplets in. And the nice thing about this stuff here is uh, you can reuse it. This is uh, footage from my uh, Ziturdes review video. Uh, but what I'm using here is this stuff that I'm going to uh, reheat up. Okay, let's see how I get on. Um, by some liquiding at least. Likes it anyway. Oh, he's really worried. I think. to be leaking any bubbles in there let's not push it any further the nice thing about this is that it cools down really quick so it not take long for it to go into a solid state. So I am just going to leave that. I'll do a little. I am, this is it done. Um, I did wrong here and I can't see now here, I think it was. I tried to do an extra pour um, into the corners where it hadn't gone and so it looks a bit funky, but I can live with it but it is trying to bow up here. Um, so what I'm gonna try and do is sandwich it in between some cardboard. So if I don't try to damage this too much, fog that down and stick some heavy books on. And this is what it looks like when it's finished. Um, we have the, these bits are unattached so I can just reuse them in different configurations and setups. Uh, this is not attached either, so we can slide it across to reveal the escape route here. Uh, we have the water all done, even with my botch bits. Never do a re-pour. Once you've poured, leave this stuff. 
hopefully I'll get to do another project in the near future using it but yeah I am really happy with this uh, we can have a closer look up at it now uh, but before we do thank you guys for watching thank you to my wonderful awesome patrons who allow me to purchase uh, materials paints and what have you without my wife moaning at me uh, allowing me to make such videos um, if you are a patron of course and you want to see me tackle something let me know over on the patreon just uh, I don't know give me a shout over there and or even here to be honest and I will see what I can do and see if I can uh, make something for you uh, I'll show you how I tackle it uh, thank you to Crooked Staff Terrain for the video on making these and this is awesome um, if you're interested in more sort of stuff like this go over to his channel and check him out uh, he does some awesome stuff uh, this saved me a load of time and hassle trying to figure out something like this and it looks pretty damn cool uh, thank you guys for watching uh, like share subscribe and all that good stuff and until the next video guys stay safe take care